Today we're gonna build a fitness calculator using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. You're going to learn how to build a user interface from the ground up and calculate things based on user input. So let's get started. So here I am on Visual Studio Code. Let me create a new folder for this project. I'm gonna name it Fitness Calculator. Now going back to Visual Studio Code, let's go to File, Open Folder, Select the folder we just created and click open. Now let me create the HTML file for the project. And here let's use the HTML5 shortcut to create the basic structure. Let's change the title to fitness calculator. Let's save this and we are going to run this project with the live server extension to check if you have it. You can go to the extensions panel and search for live server. Select this one by Ritwick Day. And if you see an install button showing, you can go ahead, install it and restart Visual Studio Code. Once you do it, you will see the go live shortcut located at the bottom right of your text editor. So you can just click on it. And now we have the project running in the web browser. Now let's go check the prototype for this project. I'm leaving a link for this in the description of the video in case you want to follow along with me. So here we can check things like margins, colors, fonts, and things like that. Now every time I start a new project, I like setting up the page layout first. So I create variables for the colors, I set up the page containers, I reset some default styles for some elements. So let's do that first. Let's go to Visual Studio Code. I'm going to create a new CSS file right here. Since this is a small project, let's just leave everything on the same folder. So let's create a style.css file and add a link right here. Now going back to the CSS file, the first thing I'm going to do is to reset margins and paddings for all elements. I like doing this because then it's easier to see where I missed adding the correct margins and paddings instead of staying with the default ones. Another thing I'm going to do is creating the class for the page container. If we go back to the design, we can press R to add a rectangle. And now we can see that the page container should have 800 pixels of width. So we can delete this, go back there, let's add a width of 800 pixels with a max width of 100% and margin auto so it stays centralized on the page. Now let's create the variables for the colors we are going to use on the project. So let's add the root pseudo element and going back to the project here, we're going to have this red color. So let me copy the code and this is going to be a variable called red color. Now we also have this gray color for the text, so we can see this is not exactly black. So let's copy the color code for this. And this is gonna be called gray color. And we also have a light gray for this and also for these borders. So let's copy the color code. This is going to be a light gray. And now let's see the fonts we are gonna use in the project. So here I'm using two fonts one for the buttons and the headings, which is this font called Teco, and for the paragraphs, I'm using Roboto. Both of them are available on Google Fonts, so let's go there to get the links, fonts.google.com. Let me search for Teco. Here it is. Let's click Get Font, but not do anything yet. Let's select the Roboto as well. So going back here, let me search for Roboto, it's right here, click get font, and now we have both of them selected. We are not gonna self-host the font, so instead of downloading the files, let's just get the embed code. So this one first. This is gonna go in the HTML file right before the link for the CSS file. Now let's select the last two lines and fix the indentation, save this. And now going back to the CSS file, we are going to set the Roboto for all elements, so right here and specifically for the headings. So age one to age six and also for buttons, we are 
going to use the taco font. All right, so now we are done setting up the page layout. We can start working in the header section. So let's get the height of this element. We can select it and we can see right here 234 pixels. Let's go back there. Let's create the header element. Inside it, we are going to have an age one for the title of the page. So fitness calculator going back there. Let's add the header. So we have a height of 234 pixels. Let me check the font size for the age one. So we have 60 pixels. I'm going to add the age one inside here. So we are going to be using CSS nesting, which is now native. It's supported by all major browsers. So we don't have to be using those long selectors anymore. We can do just like we used to do with SAS, less and other CSS preprocessors. So font size, 60 pixels. The color is white. When it's black and white, I don't think we need to create variables. So I just use the names black and white for all other colors. I like creating variables. Now here, since the age one is going to be centralized vertically and horizontally, I'm going to use Flexbox. So display flex, align items, center, justify content, center. Now let's just add a background color of black just so we can see things working. When we have the image, then we can remove the background color. So we can save this, we can go back there and we see the header showing. Now for the image, if you want to get the image I'm using right here, first I'm going to delete this view just for now because this is going to be added using CSS. So let's remove it. Let's just use the image as it was originally. And now I'm going to go to export image down here. This is inside the export panel. So let me choose JPEG since there's no transparency and I'm going to export the image. So it's right here. Let me copy the image. Like I said, I'm just going to leave everything in the same folder. So let's check if it's correct. We can see it is. Let's name this hero.jpg. Now here we are going to change the background color for the background image. So we are going to add the URL, which is going to point to hero.jpg. Now let's break some lines so we can use the shorthand properties. I'm going to add the no repeat also center and outside from this property. Let's add another one called background size and let's choose cover. We can save this, go back there. And now this is appearing as it should. Now to add that black overlay, we could add an absolute positioned elements, but we don't need to overcomplicate things. What we can do instead is the following. We can add the background color for the age one. So let's use RGB element first. Let's just add plain black zero 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 one. I'm going to add the transparency in a moment. Let me just save this and go back there. And now we can see the background showing. Now what we're going to do instead is the following. We're not going to add the display flex to the header, but to the age one. And we are going to use the width of 100% and also the height of 100%. We can save this. So this way it grows with the parent element. So this is why the age one is now covering the whole thing. Since we just have the age one here, this works fine. If we had another piece of text, then we would have to think of something different. But since we only have the age one, this is exactly what we need. And now if we go to the prototype, I'm going to press control Z to put that overlay back. We can see that we had an overlay at 60% opacity. So going back to the project, instead of choosing one for the opacity, we can choose 0.6. We can save this. We go back there and now we have that overlay just like the prototype. So we are done with the header element. So let's start working in the tabs area. Let's go back to Visual Studio Code. And after the header, let's add the main section of the page inside the main section. I'm going to wrap everything inside a container. 
let's add the age to first. So here we have a text saying choose your calculator. Now let's get the correct size and margins. So we have 40 at the top and 26 at the bottom and also the font size of 40 pixels. So let's go to the CSS file outside the header. Let's open another selector for the main section. Inside here we have the age two. So we have a padding top of 40 pixels, zero on the right side, 26 pixels below and zero on the left side. The font size is 40 pixels and we have text align center. We save this, we go back there and now this is looking like the prototype. So now we can start this section for the tabs right below the age two. I'm going to start a new section with a class of tabs. And here I'm going to add two buttons. One for the BMI calculation and another one for the water intake calculation. Once we set up the page later, you can add as many tabs as you want. If you want to add other fitness calculators, feel free to do that. Okay. So let's save this now. Let's go back there to see how this looks. Now, one thing to notice here is that the buttons, they have the same height. So this one has 40 pixels. The font size is 18. If we check the ones for the tabs, we can see it's also 40 with the font size of 18. So we can create these styles globally for all buttons of the page. So let's go back there and at the top here, right where we position the global styles for things, I'm going to add one for buttons. So let's add a width of 170 with a max width of 100% for mobile. The height is 40 pixels, font size is 18. And now if we save this and go back there, we can see this is already starting to take shape. Now we need these buttons to have some border radius, but since the other buttons of the page don't have, let's apply these only to these buttons specifically. So going back to the CSS file, let's go down. Here we have the main element inside main we have a section called tabs let's add a text align center so we can easily centralize those buttons let's check the margin so here we have let's consider this to be 40. now let's add the margin bottom of 40 pixels and inside this section we are going to have those specific buttons we can see a border radius of 50 pixels showing right here. So let's add a border radius of 50 pixels. This is going to have a border of one pixel solid. Let's use the variable. Let's use the gray color we have and a background color of transparent. We can save this. We go back there and now this is starting to look good. Now let's do the styles for the active tab. So only the one selected will show in red. So for this, we need to go to the HTML file and add a class of active for this one. Later, we are going to use JavaScript to change depending on the one you click. But for now, you can leave the BMI one active by default. So inside the button, we are going to add a class of active for the button. Remember that when using nesting, if we add a class of active like this, this is not going to work because this would be selecting an element with a class of active that is a child of the button element, which is not the case. This is a class for the button itself. So to do this with nesting, you use the end symbol. So this means a button that has a class of active. So in this case, this is going to be a border of one pixel solid red and the background color also red and the color of the text is white. So we save this, we go back there and now we have this almost like the design. We just need to add some margin. So we have 28 pixels. When I have 28 pixels, I like adding 14 to each 
side so we don't have any problems for the last buttons if we have more so I'm going to add a margin of 14 pixels and I'm gonna do this for all sides so top and bottom as well because on mobile devices if these break lines then they're going to have space between them so I'm going to add 14 pixels for all corners of the button we go back there and now we are done with the tabs section now let's work in the last part of the UI, which is the calculator, and then we can move on to the JavaScript part. So here we are going to start with a paragraph for the description of the tab. I'm going to add one for the calculator. And here I'm going to add a div for the tab content. And this one, I'm going to add a for attribute, which I'm going to use later. And this is going to be for the BMI. So I'm going to add an ID to this button for the BMI. And for this one, I'm going to add an ID of water. And then later we can create the tab content for this tab. Now we are going to start with a P element. Let's get one using ChatGPT. All right, let's copy this and let's use inside the p element let me break a few lines now let's go check font size so here we have roboto 16 and this doesn't grow with the page container this is actually smaller so for the p elements inside here i'm going to add a max width of 562 so going back there right after the tab section we just started a new one for the calculator. Now inside the calculator, we have an element with a class of tab content. Inside the tab content, we have a P element. So the max width is going to be 562 pixels. The font size is 16 and we have text align center. Now let's change the color because this is not exactly black. We are using the gray color. So let's do this for all elements because I'm not using any black text in this project. So the color of all elements, except the ones we change below, will be that gray color. Let's save this. Let's go back there. And now this is starting to look good. We just need to centralize on the page. So since we added a max width, let's add a margin of auto. We save this and now we have the description for the tab. So going back here, now we are going to have a form to the left and the result box to the right. Let's go back to the project and right after the P, I'm going to add a form, which is going to have a label for the height. So let's add an input of type number. Let's do the same thing for the weight. So here we have one for the weight in kilograms and the input is going to have a name of weight. Now we just need a button and the text is going to be calculate. So let's save this and let's take a look before we continue. So now we can see the form showing. There's a lot of CSS to be done. We are going to do this in a second before we do it. Let's just add the other element for the result. So right after the form, let's add another element for the result. And inside, I'm going to add a small text, which is going to be there before we have the results. And I'm going to get the text from the prototype. Let's see what we have here. Let's copy this and paste it right here. So going back to the project, now we have the form, we have the result box, we just need to style them. Now here we need to align these elements using Flexbox. The problem is that we also have the P. So if we go to the tab content element and we add a display of flex and the justify content to center, if we do this and go back there, we can see that now the paragraph is also showing side by side. And we don't want this to happen. We just want the form and the result box to be side by side. One way to do this would be to add an extra HTML element that would have only the form and the result inside and would leave the P out. 
and this element would be the one with Flexbox. But if we can have a solution that doesn't add new elements to the HTML, it's always better. So instead of adding an extra element, we are going to do the following. We are going to add a flex wrap property set to wrap so the elements can break lines if needed. And now for the P element, we are going to add a flex basis of 100%. So it is going to take 100% of the parent elements and the other ones will wrap automatically. And now we are just going to add the form right here and the result box. So for the form, I'm going to use a flex basis of 35%. And for the result, I'm just going to set the flex grow to one. And this is going to take the rest of the space available. So when we do this and save, let's go back there. We can see that now we have the P element at the top. Then we have the form to the left side and the result box to the right, which is exactly what we wanted. Now let's check the margin we have. So we have 48. So for the P, we can add a margin bottom of 48 pixels. And right here, if you want to add background colors to the form and to the result box, I think it's always a good idea. Just so we can have a better understanding of what is going on. So let's start with the form fields. So let's go to the prototype. We can see the font size for the labels, which is 14 pixels. And the height for the inputs is 40 pixels. So inside the form element, we have some labels which have a font size of 14 pixels and we have the inputs which have a height of 40 pixels. Let's add some paddings to left and right of six pixels. So we have some space when we start typing inside the input fields. Let's go take a look. We can save this, go back there. And now this is starting to look better. We just need them to show on separate lines. I think the easiest way here is to just use Flexbox and the Flex Direction to column. So we show every element taking one row. So going back there, we can go inside the form and add a display of Flex and a Flex Direction of column. We save this. Let's just add some margins here. So for the inputs, we can add a margin top of four pixels to separate them from the labels and below them. So margin bottom, 10 pixels. We save this, we go back there and now this is starting to look better. Now let's check the button. So we can see one thing that I didn't notice before is that all buttons, they have the text transformed to uppercase. And this one is also 100% and with the red color, so let's work on all these things now. Let's go back there and first let's go to the global styles for all buttons and let's change the text transform property to uppercase. So we do it from here and now let's go inside the form. We have a button. This has to be 100% wide, background color, red color, color white and border 1px solid red. We do this, we go back there, and now this form is looking just like the prototype. One thing we can do here is to add some paddings to the form itself. So let's go back there, let's go to the form, and we can add paddings of 12 pixels to all sides. And now let's remove the background color because we already know how this is working. So we save this, we go back there, and now we are done with the form. Now the last part of the UI is the result box. So let's work on it right now. The first thing is to change the background color. This is going to have the light gray color. So the result box, let's change the background color to our light gray color variable. And let's add a display of flex, align items, center, justify content, center. This element will also have the same paddings. So let's save this and see how this looks. 
Now this is starting to look a bit better, but I think we have a bit more space here. We still need to add 40 pixels extra for this margin. So let's do this in the result box. So margin left 40 pixels. Let's save this. We go back there and now we are done with the result box. Now it's time to go to the fun part, which is the JavaScript part. So let's start with the tab selection functionality. Let's go to the project and let me start a new JS file, which I'm going to name main.js. Let's go to the HTML file. I'm going to add a script with a source to the main.js file. Going to the JS file, always a good idea to show an alert just to check if the JS file is working fine. We can see everything is good with the JS file, so we can get started. Now let's create a function which we can call handle tabs. And first we need to select all the tabs. So let's start a new variable inside here called tabs. And we are going to do document dot query selector all so we can select all tabs. Now let's just see the HTML structure that we made. So here we have this section with a class of tabs and we have buttons inside. So the CSS selector is going to be section dot tabs and we are going to select all buttons that are direct children of these tabs. Now we can start making some tests in the console to see if this is working. So the first thing I'm going to do is send the tabs to the console just to see if we are correctly selecting it. And another thing I'm going to do is the following. So for these buttons, let me add the on click attribute. And this is going to execute the handle tabs function. Let's do the same thing for the other button as well. Let's save this. Let's go back there and let me open the inspector. And when we click any of the buttons, we can see the node list showing. We have the first tab and the second tab. So we know that this is working fine. Now, the first thing we are going to do is removing the active state of all the buttons and then activating just the one that was clicked. So this is going to be step one. So right here, we need to run a loop. So I is going to be less than tabs dot length. And we do I plus plus on every iteration. And here we are going to get every individual tab, access the class list and use the remove method and we are going to remove the class of active. Let's remember that we have the BMI set by default. And once we click any of the tabs, we're just going to remove the active states of all tabs. Now let's do this step by step to avoid confusion. So going back there, if I click this button, you can see that now we don't have any active tabs. Now we just need to activate the tab that was clicked. And to do that, we are going to have to pass the event as the argument of this function. So here we need to name this event and inside the JavaScript function, we can pass event or E so it's shorter. And up here we can create a new variable for the button that was clicked, which we can call target. And this is going to be E dot target. So for the target, we can access the class list and add a class of active. Now this should do the trick. Let's test it out. We can click these buttons and now we are able to select them. Now one thing I like doing for buttons is adding the cursor to pointer so it has a better usability. So let's go back to the project and at the top in the global styles for buttons, we can add the cursor set to pointer. And now this is looking a bit better. So we are now being able to select tabs. Now we need to change the content that shows below because each tab has its own description, form and result box. Let's go to Visual Studio Code. And remember that we started this div for the tab content. And this one is for the BMI. One thing I'm going to do here is to add the active class 
because this is what I'm going to use to control if the tab is showing or not. So I'm going to add another one. This one for the water intake. And this one is not actually let me leave this one active and not the BMI one. Let me just get a description on chat GPT. All right, let's use this sentence. So this is for the water intake. And for this, we are going to have the weight and another one for the activity levels. Let's use hours per day. So the type is number and the name is activity. All right, we can save this. And if we go back to the project, now it doesn't seem to be getting the styles. Let's see what is going on. I think there's this extra closing tag that was here by accident we can save this we go back there and now we see the correct styles of course we only want to see one so we are only going to see the active tab so going back to the css let's go to the calculator we have the tab content and here we are going to change the display to none except when it is active so let's remember n dot active so we select the calculator that also has a class of active now this is going to have the display of flex we do this we go back there and now we are only seeing the form for the water intake now we need to make sure that the tab content information reflects the selected tab above so let's work on that going back to the javascript file Let's remember something real quick. I'm going to send the target to the console. So when we click this button, for example, let's remember that this element has the ID of water. If I click BMI, this one has the ID of BMI. So we are going to use this information to decide which element is going to be showing below. So let's create another variable called selected tab which is going to be target.id. Now let's send the selected tab to the console to see if we are getting the ID correctly. Going back there, I click water intake. We can see water, BMI, water, BMI. So we know which button we are clicking. Now we just need to switch the active states. So here, the same way we created a variable for the list of tabs, let's create one for the contents as well. So let tab content now let's just copy this line and this one is going to be calculator inside the calculator we have elements with a class of tab content so this way we are going to select both of the tab contents that we have inside now we just need to run a loop on them as well so here we can change to tab content here as well we are going to remove the active states for all of the tabs. Let's see if this is working. So once we click a button, we just remove the active class from all tabs. Let's refresh the page and test again. I'm going to click any button here and we are going to remove that class. And now we just need to add it back to the one corresponding to the ID clicked. So going back there here, we are going to use a document.query selector. So to do this, I'm going to use the back ticks. So we can use some string interpolation right here. And what we are going to select is inside the calculator, we have an element called tab content. And remember that, let's go back to the HTML. For the tab content, we use the for attribute. So this one is for water and for BMI. And this matches the IDs we have above. So this is what we are going to use to select the correct ones. For this, we can just use the attribute selector. So for, since we are using the back ticks, we can add a dynamic value right here with dollar sign curly braces. So select a tab. Now we just need to access the class list and add a class of 
active. So this is how we are going to do the trick. In this case, we can save this. We can go back there and now we can see that this is working. So we have BMI and the result box and it's also correct for water intake. So this is the text for water intake. This is the form. So we are done with the tab selection functionality. Now we just need to move to calculating the BMI. So let's start by creating a new function. I'm going to name this handle BMI and let's show an alert just to see if this is working. So BMI. Now going back to the HTML, let's go to the form for the BMI. So here we have the button. Let's add the on click attribute or the on click event handler. And this is going to execute the handle BMI function. Let's do the same thing for the water intake, even though we don't have that function yet, but we can just leave it here. So this one is going to be handle water. Now we can save this. We can click the calculate button for BMI. Now here we have an error because we need to return to the initial state. Since we have the BMI tab set to active, we also need the tab content to be set to active as well. Remember, we changed this to the water intake. So let me put it back. This one shouldn't be the, the active one by default, but this one. So what matters is that the same tab content that is active matches the same tab that is active at the top here. So saving this, now we have the BMI form. We click calculate and now we can see the alert showing. Now the first thing we need to do is to make sure we have the information from these fields. So let's work on that. Let's remember that we have these tab content elements with the four attributes. So this is what we are going to use to get the correct form fields. So let's go back to the JavaScript file and let's create a constant for the height. Let's transform this into a number when we get it. So parse float. And here we are going to use the document dot query selector. And the selector we are going to use here is going to be tab content. Let's select only the one for BMI. So for BMI. And inside here we have an input with an ID of height. So we are going to select this element and get its value. Now let's do the same thing for the weight. And let's send this to the console to make sure we are getting them correctly. So I'm going to send height and weight. We save this, we go back there, we click on it without any information. Now it says cannot read properties of no reading value. So let's just take a look here. We are selecting an input with an ID of height, ID of weight. Let's go check. Actually, we didn't use the ID for the inputs, but name. So let's change the selector. So here, this is going to have to be name, height, and the same thing below. So name, Wait, now this should work. Let's go back there to test. Click here. We have not a number, not a number. But if we fill this information, let's say 170, 70 kilos. Click calculate and now we are getting the numbers correctly. Now let's do the validation because both of them are mandatory. So now we can remove this console.log and we are going to add an if. And if we have height and weight, then we can go ahead and do something. If not, we are going to send an alert and ask the user to please view all inputs in number format. Use dot for decimals. This is going to make sure that the user will type in the correct format. So we can save this. If we try to calculate without anything, it's not going to let us proceed. If I enter only the height, click calculate, it doesn't let me proceed. If I 
enter both information, then we will be able to proceed. So now we just need to apply the BMI formula. So first thing is to create a variable called BMI. And I already know that we need to get the weight and divide by the squared height. So height times height. Since we are using height in centimeters, not meters, then we need to do a multiplication by 10,000. And this is going to be the BMI. So here we can send the BMI to the console. So again, try without any information. We can proceed. If we have 170, 70 kilos, calculate. We have the BMI showing right here. Now, besides showing the BMI for the user, we also need to show the classification because when calculating the body mass index, we have classifications such as underweight, normal weight, overweight. So let's go again to ChatGPT. So here we can see the ranges. So let's ask ChatGPT. Let's use only underweight, normal weight, overweight and obese. And I'm going to ask ChatGPT to build a switch block for me so we can correctly define what is the category. So give me a JavaScript switch block to evaluate the BMI and return the classification. I don't like using ChatGPT to build complete projects. I think it's not there yet, but for these specific tasks, I think it's really good. It can save us a lot of time. So let's press enter. Let's wait for it to do its magic. That's great. Now let's copy the switch statement. Let's go back to the project. And here we know we have the correct BMI. So let's add the switch at the top here. Let's create a variable for the BMI classification. We don't have to fill it just now. We are going to do this from inside the switch. So instead of returning the classification, we are going to do BMI class and we are going to fill in the value of this variable. I don't know why it didn't include the break statement. So let me do this. Then we have the case for overweight. We have the case for obese. And if we don't fall into any of these categories for some reason, let's just send an alert saying that there is an invalid BMI. I don't think this is going to happen, but if it does, then we'll be able to handle it. All right. So once this is done, we can just make a quick test to see if this is working. So I'm going to send BMI and BMI class to the console. Let's go back to the page and let's try 170, 70 kilos, calculate. And then we have the BMI and the classification, which is normal weight. So now we just need to show the information here. So let's go back to the HTML. And here's what I'm going to do inside the result. I'm going to have one div with a class of init, which is going to have this text. And I'm going to have another div with a class of final. So here we can have a P for the BMI. Then we can show the BMI in an age three. Let's add an ID to this so we can easily send some information to this element. So this is going to be result BMI. And let's copy and paste this your categorization. And this is going to be the result BMI class. Now we can save this, we can go back there. And now we need to show either the init or the final one. So let's go to the CSS file. And first, let's get the init that's inside the result element. And let's use the display of block. And the final one, we can use the display of none. Once we do this, when we start the page, we are going to hide that result box. But once we are able to finish calculating the BMI and the BMI class, then we can switch. We can hide the init and show the final. 
So in this case, for the parent element, which is the result, if this element has a class of success, we are going to swap these properties. So inside the result, right before closing it, we are going to add another selector for a class of success. And if it does, it means that the calculation was done. So in this case, we are going to reverse this. So the init is going to be hidden and the final is going to be shown. And now the only thing we need to do here is once we have the result, we replace the BMI and BMI class on those H3s and we add the success class so we can show the box. So let's do this now. First, I'm going to add a variable for the result box. So this is document dot query selector. Let's copy this part because this is specific for the BMI. Inside, we have a section with a class of result. Let me just confirm. So we have, it's not a section, but a div. So let me just correct this. So now we have this element selected. So once we calculate the information, let's get the result box, access the class list and add a class of success. This is going to do the trick of showing the correct box. Let's see if this is working. So let's add height and weight. And once we click calculate, we can see we are successfully swapping the information inside the box. Now we just need to fill in with the BMI and the categorization. Let's remember that we added these age trees with specific IDs. So let me just copy this one. And before showing the results, let's replace the information. So result box dot query selector. So here we have one with an ID of result BMI, and we are going to change the inner text to the BMI. And let's apply the two fixed method so we can round this to two decimal places. This is going to look nicer. Now let's do the same thing for the categorization. So here we have result BMI class and we are going to send the BMI class. Now it should be working. Let's make a test. Let's try again with no information. We can't proceed. If we have a person with 175 and 85 kilos, we calculate and then we have the information showing. Now let's just fix the CSS real quick. Let's see what is going on. As you can see, the P element has a big margin and we should also increase the size of the H3 to 28 pixels. So let's do this now. So inside the result, we have a P element. Let's change the margin bottom to something smaller. Maybe four pixels is going to be okay. Let's change the text align for this whole block to center and let's change the age three to 28 pixels. We save this, we go back there and now this is looking like the prototype. Actually, this is using the taco font, which I think it looks even nicer than what I had here. So let me just change in the prototype. Let's use the taco font and this is much better. So as you can see, we are almost done with the project. We are able to calculate the BMI. Let's try again. Let's try 165, 68 kilos, calculate. We have the BMI, the categorization. This is looking fantastic. So we just need to work on the formula for the water intake. Let's do that real quick. So again, let's use ChatGPT to check the formula for the water intake. So here we have an example that we can use to test later, but basically this is the formula we need to use. Let's get this in a second. First, let's go there and create the function. Let's remember that we already added the on click to a function called handle water. So let's create that function. It's going to have 
a similar structure than this one so we can copy the whole thing of course this could be a bit more dynamic to avoid repetition but for this project since I only have two tabs it's fine to do like this but if you want to scale this project it's better to refactor this so you only have one calculation function so this is going to be handle water let's erase all this and here we have weight and activity so this one remember we have for water and for water so this one has a name of activity and the other one a name of weight so we can go check this is the input for the activity and this one is for the weight now the result box this is also the one for water and here we have activity and weight now just one thing we need to be careful is that the activity level shouldn't be mandatory because if there's a person that does zero hours of exercise per day then this is not going to return true so we are going to jump out of this block so we need to make sure that we accept zero as a valid activity amount so for this we can easily get the activity variable and add something if we can get something from this parse float we will use it if not we are going to replace this by zero this is important because if we have something like undefined this is going to break our calculation so instead we are going to add the or operator and if we have something from this operation we are going to use it if not we are going to use zero and now we should just check for the weight we don't care if we have activity or not either we're gonna have something or we're gonna have zero to test this out we can do console.log and send the weight and activity now let me comment these lines just so we don't have any errors let's save this let's go back there change to water intake and now if we try to calculate we should change this message because in this case we only need weight so let's adjust it now please fill the weight in number format now let's try again water intake please view the weight so let's view the weight to 70 and if we don't have any activity level let's try it out calculate we can see we have 70 and 0 so since we didn't enter anything we are transforming this into 0 however if we type anything like 2 hours per day then we calculate now we have 70 and 2 so this is done we can just go ahead and apply the formula let's go back to chat GPT let's remember that this is the formula so let's do this and right here we are going to start a new variable for the water amount so this is going to be let's replace by the actual values the actual variables so this is weight multiplied by 0 0.033 we don't need parentheses here plus the activity time which we are just calling it activity multiplied by 0 0.35 so this should be the formula for the water amount and now we can just check the result box so we need one for init and one for final like this here we are only going to have one p and one age three so the p is going to be liters of water recommended per day and here is the result water going back to the function we can uncomment this line so the result water is going to receive the water amount we just calculated at the top here this one is not necessary and this one is necessary so we change the class of the parent to success and we see the result 
So if there's no mistake in this code, we should be finished with the project. So let's save this. Let's go back there. So let me go to water intake. Try to calculate without the weight. Doesn't work. So a person weights 80 kilos, thus one hour of exercise per day. So now we have an error. Let's see what is the problem here. Let's see if the result box has for water correctly. So again, the problem is this closing div. Not sure why this is happening, but let me remove it. Let's try again. So water intake, 70 kilos, one hour of exercise per day, calculate. And now we have the result showing. Let's see without any activity level. So instead of 2.66, it's going to be 2.31. Of course, a person that doesn't exercise will need less water. Let's go to the BMI again, 175, 75 kilos, BMI, normal weight. So we are officially done with this project. Let me just go back to the JavaScript and remove this console.log because this was just for testing purposes during development time. Now we're done, I'm gonna close the console. So here we have this project, it's looking good and a great real life fitness calculator that you can use. So that was a lot of fun, I hope you liked this video. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the web schools to support the channel. So I'll see you soon.